Okay, we're going to tie a light Edson Tiger, a personal favorite of mine that I use uh, annually for landlocked salmon and brook trout. I'm going to play this a little bit fast so we can get through it a little quicker. And uh, I'm just putting on some lead here, and I have to, or lead free wire. And I have to admit uh, the original pattern doesn't call for it to be weighted, but I like to fish this weighted, so. I'm tying it that way and I'm just building a thread ramp in front of and in back of the uh, lead free wire. I'm using 15 thousandths lead free wire here. And I'm going to put in the tag and I've got gold silver tinsel and I want the gold side out. So I'm going to tie the gold side against the hook. Come up here and uh, tie off a half hitch. Bring my bobbin cradle into play. Let that thread hang out there and then I'm going to grab this tinsel and start wrapping and when I do it folds over so that the gold side that I tied against the hook is showing. And you can see as I work around the hook point here, each, each time I wiggle this back and forth the uh, tinsel falls off the previous wrap and that makes for a nice smooth edge to edge wraps. And I've wrapped uh, plenty of wraps, I've got extra wraps here. When the fly is finished, you want three or four wraps of the uh, tag to show. So we'll wrap some of the body over this. And first we have to mount the tail, and that is the barred wood duck that I'm using here uh, that you use for the tail. I'm gonna cut a segment right out of the middle of this, kind of the sweet spot of the feather. And uh, it has very equal and balanced black and white bars. Uh, or will when I fold it over. Instead of trying to match two pieces of, uh, of, of uh, opposing feathers and getting the bars to uh, come together nicely, I've found that if you just take a piece out of the center of a feather like this and fold it, uh, the bars come together and they fit, they fit pretty well. And honestly, the fish don't care. So then I end up using the whole feather and the bars become a little uneven but I still get a double black bar and that's what this fly calls for is two of those black bars to be showing out over the as the uh, tail. So I'm going to use the turn and look technique where I use the rotation feature of my vise to turn and look right down on my tie-in point. This way as I pull tight or as I put the thread in between my thumb and forefingers like that I can see if I knock anything out of alignment and I haven't so I'm going to wrap this down now I come up with light thread tension and then over the top and then pull down hard up light down hard up light down hard up light down hard and that allows me to wrap the whole length of the shank without pulling this material down off the top of the hook and uh, that was a little insert picture there of uh, some peacock curl and that is what we're going to use to do the body on this fly. I've got three or four strands of peacock curl here. I'm going to attach it to the hook, hold it up on top and then pull it down onto the side closest to me. And then rotate down so the peacock curl and the thread are coming off from the same point. Wrap my peacock curl around the thread and pull the thread out parallel to the hook and rotate. And that allows me to build a twisted rope that I can then uh, wrap the body with using the rotary feature of the vise. And when I run out of twist, I can just take this rope and hold it perpendicular, I mean uh, parallel with the hook again. Rotate a few times and uh, build some more twist and then wrap up and get to the end of the body and I'm not quite as far up as I'd like to be uh, but that's that's close enough. So trim that off and get some bucktail that we're going to use for the wing and you can uh, take the tips of this these uh, bucktail hairs and align them in your hand your thumb and forefinger uh, finger stacking the hair tips and getting them uh, reasonably close to even and some people like to use this method others like to use the hair stacker that was just in the background 
the hair stacker gives you very even tips and the uh, fingertip method gives you these looser tips uh, not quite as uh, uh, defined uh, but a lot of people think that gives you better action in the water I'm going to use the, the uh, stacked hair and again I'm going to use the turn and look technique to turn and look right down on the top of my hook my tie-in point I can see my my uh, loop I know that the uh, hair stayed right on top of the hook and I would normally just cut this off but to show you another technique uh, you can pre-cut these hairs before you fasten that wing down so I've measured cut I'll trim the last of that up and now I'm going to tie it on I'll use the same turn and look technique same pinch technique and I'm using the uh, thread tension light up and heavy down on the back side to keep that right on top of the hook and there's my wing uh, and I like to cut the hair before I set the wing but it's up to you as a tire certainly now this is a streamer neck and you can see it's kind of been picked clean where the skin was a little translucent there but these are the feathers that I like to use for the uh, topping on this wing so I take two of these feathers, one on top of the other, and lay them in here. It, sometimes they'll lay in perfectly one right on top of the other, and sometimes they'll spread into a little V. I kind of like it if you can get them to V out. Uh, I think it, they have more movement in the water that way. Use the pinch technique, the turn and look, so I'm looking right at my tie-in point. And I like the looks of those, although I have to admit they're a little long. I'll trim that off, wrap those ends down and get ready for the uh, jungle cock eyes. I'm taking the jungle cock eyes off the lower part of the neck because you just use the eye. Uh, they're supposed to be tied in very short and uh, original patterns uh, uh, called for a uh, well they didn't call for it they said as an alternate you could use a metal disc as the eye and it was thought to give more flash so I set that one uh, jungle cock eye on uh, rotate this over another great thing about a rotary vise there's no back side of the hook when you have to tie on an eye on the back side you just rotate it over and tie it in those look to match up nicely couple more wraps to make sure they're secure and I'll trim these off and that one wants to be stubborn uh, well I should have just picked it up and cut it off in the first place it's much easier to just grab the stems I got lazy there and wrap that down do a whip finish knot A little head cement and we've got a light Edson Tiger. It's a great fishing fly. I catch a lot of landlocked salmon on this pattern. Looks even better when you put a little head cement on it. And there you have it, a light Edson Tiger tied using rotary fly tying techniques.